avons décidé de prendre nos responsabilités devant le peuple et devant l'histoire. À prendre ses responsabilités vis-à-vis -vis du peuple souverain de Guinée et dans sa totalité. La constitution est suspendue. 2. La charte de la transition est dissoute. Asamigoida, 40, formed at the Kadi Military Academy, Colonel in the Malian Army, Commander of the Malian Special Forces. Mamadi Dumbuya, 43, former legionnaire in the French Army, Colonel in the Guinean Army, Commander of the Special Forces Group. Ibrahim Traore, 35, trained at the Georges Namamwano Military Academy in Pau. Captain in the Burkina Faso Army. These three are from the same generation, and guess what? They've all executed coups in their respective countries. Now, they're tasked with leading transitional governments, but the big question is, can they pull it off, and what lies ahead? Africa is in motion, with a new generation stepping up to rekindle the continent's spirit. These events got me thinking, did political coups ever occur in ancient Egypt? And if so, how and when did they happen? But first, let's peel back the layers and understand the process of power transfer in ancient Egypt, especially when it involved a change of dynasty, a kind of legal coup, if you will. In Kemet, that's what ancient Egyptians called their land. Pharaohs ruled as legitimate monarchs within dynasties, essentially a royal family. Dynasties kicked off with a founding king, and his descendants became part of that dynasty. But sometimes, dynasties hit rough patches due to issues like dynastic instability, leading to dynastic changes. These shifts typically happened when a ruling dynasty faced crises such as political turmoil, economic instability, external invasions, or natural disasters. When the old dynasty couldn't maintain its grip, it opened the door for a new one. To legitimize these new dynasties, the incoming ruler often married a daughter from the previous ruling family, ensuring that the royal bloodline continued. However, these daughters didn't rule themselves, but passed the power to their husbands, the pharaoh's son-in-laws, who became pharaohs. This tradition was like a relay of power through royal daughters, and it's vividly depicted in representations of goddess Ozit or Isis, with a throne on her head symbolizing that inherited power. It meant that in order to reach the throne, contenders had to be validated by these ladies. Yet, there were exceptions. Take Ramses I, for instance, from the 19th dynasty. He didn't have direct ties to the previous dynasty, but brought stability to a troubled kingdom by having sons and grandsons, breaking the cycle of royal marriages. In other words, Ramses II, his grandson had no ties with the royal families of Kemet. So, while these transitions resembled regime changes, they were usually legal and necessary for the kingdom's well-being, with the preceding family often playing a role in the transition. Now, let's shift gears to the juicy stuff, the illegal coups in ancient Egypt. But before we do, let's define a coup. A coup d'état, also called coup, is the sudden, violent overthrow of an existing government by a small group. The chief prerequisite for a coup is control of all or part of the armed forces, the police, and other military elements. So, let's look for ancient events that come close to this definition. Surprisingly, when we dig into history, we find that political coups, as we understand them today, weren't common in ancient Egypt. Why? Well, it's thanks to the effectiveness and stability of their dynastic system. Families were usually ready to hand over power when there was no other option because the nation's fate depended on it. But there were some interesting periods of political turmoil. While they weren't traditional coups, the intermediate periods in ancient Egyptian history marked times of instability. These occurred when centralized power weakened between the old, middle, and new kingdoms, leading to the rise of local rulers known as nomarchs. They challenged the central government's authority, creating a kind of power struggle. The first intermediate period. In Kim's history, this moment marks the dramatic end of the old kingdom, a golden age of monumental pyramids. The downfall, though, isn't due to invaders or catastrophes. It's rooted in Pharaoh Pepi II's extraordinary reign. Imagine ascending the throne as a child and ruling until your 90s, outliving your heirs. Chaos brewed with succession woes. A realm used to order now fragmented. 
local leaders, namarks, even declared themselves rulers of independent territories, subtly challenging authority. Not coups, but they rattled the status quo. As disorganization gripped the old kingdom, it set the stage for change. The Golden Age faded, and Kemet teetered on transformation. The Second Intermediate Period This period saw the invasion of the Hyksos, a Semitic people who managed to conquer and rule a part of Kemet. Although not a traditional coup, the Hyksos takeover of Kemet can be viewed as a foreign power wresting control from the native pharaohs. The Hyksos rule represented a significant disruption in the established order and marked a departure from traditional Kemetic rule. It occurred around 1670 BCE. Likely of Semitic origin, the Hyksos managed to conquer Lower Kemet and establish their rule in the Nile Delta. From there, they slowly started to try to conquer the whole territory and control the entirety of Kemet. This can be seen as a foreign takeover, akin to a coup because many sources show that although foreign in origin, the Hyksos already lived in Kemet. And that takeover included all the elements we associate with a coup, a small group, the Hyksos, a sudden overthrow of government, control of armed forces, and a major disruption. It wasn't until the Theban rulers expelled the Hyksos that Kemet was reunified under native leadership. The Third Intermediate Period in 747 BCE, during Kemet's Third Intermediate Period, a major political upheaval unfolded. The Delta region's influential chiefs, challenging the authority of the ruling Kushite dynasty, aimed to reclaim power in the fragmented land. These Delta chiefs believed that they could better govern Lower Egypt and sought to end the dominance of the southern pharaohs from Kush. However, their rebellion faced significant challenges. The Kushite rulers had strong ties to Upper Egypt, and their legitimacy was accepted by many. In the end, the Delta chiefs were defeated by the Kushite rulers. Eventually, the other rebellious princes recognized the Kushites as their legitimate rulers. The unity and authority of the Kushite dynasty prevailed, marking a pivotal moment in ancient Egypt's political history. But wait, there's more. Now, let's fast forward to the intriguing Amarna period and the rule of Pharaoh Akhenaten. Akhenaten, or Amenhotep IV, is one of the most known rulers of Kemet. He's often associated with a radical religious and political shift during his rule between 1353 and 1336 BCE. He introduced the worship of the sun god Aten and relocated the capital to Akhetaten, modern Amarna. It's important to note that Kemet was characterized by a complex power structure with the pharaoh at the apex, supported by the royal family, priesthood, nobility, bureaucracy, and military. The cooperation and balance among these various elements were essential for the stability and continuity of the civilization. While the pharaoh was the ultimate authority, collaboration with other influential groups and maintaining the support of the populace were vital for effective governance and one of the most influential groups was the priesthood, especially the priesthood of Oman during the reign of Akhenaten. They were the guardians of the tradition. Unfortunately, with his actions, Akhenaten completely stripped them from their power. In other words, he created powerful enemies within his own kingdom. People who had been practicing a millennial tradition now were forced to change everything. Now Akhenaten's control was absolute and no one could defy him. His actions can be considered an attempt to centralize power, bypassing traditional religious authorities. This can be considered a form of coup that left a significant imprint on the history of Kemet. However, upon his death, his successor, Tutankhamun, reverted to the traditional beliefs, which could be seen as a reversal of Akhenaten's coup attempt. The Harem Conspiracy Another attempted coup occurred during the reign of Ramses III, known as the last great pharaoh of Kemet. He belonged to the 20th dynasty in ancient Egypt, faced a tumultuous period marked by political intrigue and external threats. His reign included a significant challenge, the thwarting of the harem conspiracy. In year 32 of Ramses III's reign, a grave internal threat emerged from within his harem. Orchestrated by members of his household, including wives, courtiers, and servants, the conspiracy aimed to overthrow Ramses III and place his son, Pentaware, on the throne. In other words, an attempted coup. The coup led to the assassination of the pharaoh and a meticulous investigation ensued. 
It led to the exposure of that harem conspiracy. Trials of the conspirators, meticulously documented in Papyrus Salt 124, ensued. The government responded decisively, imposing punishments, including death, on the guilty. The fate of Pentaware, the alleged leader, is subject to debate, with some accounts suggesting he took his own life. The pharaoh was finally succeeded by his other son Ramses IV. The harem conspiracy is a perfect example of the complexities of royal succession in Kemet. Succession disputes, spouses and sibling rivalries, and political intrigue could lead to dramatic events. Thutmosis Have you ever noticed this thing in between the Sphinx's paws? It's called the Dream Steel, a stone that was placed there by an unexpected pharaoh, and its story is shrouded in mystery. Menkheperur was a prince of Kemet. He was born to Pharaoh Amenhotep II and Queen Taya, but was not actually the crown prince and Amenhotep II's chosen successor to the throne. According to Thutmose's account on the Dream Steel, while the young prince was out on a hunting trip, he stopped to rest under the head of the Sphinx, which was buried up to the neck in sand. He soon fell asleep and had a dream in which the Sphinx told him that if he cleared away the sand and restored it, he would become the next pharaoh. After completing the restoration of the Sphinx, he was able to eliminate his elder brothers and become Pharaoh Thutmose IV. He then placed a carved stone tablet, now known as the Dream Steel, between the two paws of the Sphinx. The restoration of the Sphinx and the text of the Dream Steel would then be a piece of propaganda on Thutmose's part, meant to bestow legitimacy upon his unexpected kingship. So, according to the Dream Steel, Thutmose was a usurper who orchestrated a coup with the help of the Sphinx, a successful coup, unlike the other examples mentioned. Now, remember that ancient Egypt's governance was vastly different from modern states, and the concept of a political coup as we understand it today didn't quite apply. Power revolved around the divine authority of the pharaoh, and challenges to this authority often took on religious or dynastic dimensions. In conclusion, while political coups in the modern sense were not common in ancient Egypt, the long history of the civilization did witness periods of instability, foreign rule, and power struggles. These events, while not fitting the exact definition we have today of coups, reflect the complexities of ancient Kemetic politics and the challenges faced by its rulers over the millennia. Now, I really want to thank our amazing patrons, whose incredible support made this project possible. If you want to join our community on Patreon, the link is in the description below. What do you think about all these coups in Africa? Do you think that they are good or a bad thing for the future of the continent? What should be done to improve political transitions in Africa? Let me know in the comments below. I am always happy to discuss with you over there. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and support the channel. Thanks for watching Mr. Emotop's channel and see you in the next video.